Ladies and gentlemen, Ed. Right, so hey, well, I understand you had a, a day full of lots of um, intense, uh, intense ideas to do marketing and so on. Um, so I'm going to make this highly interactive, just to um, to go over the thing. We're going to do some um, memory exercises alongside a, uh, a couple of other things. So um, this is me um, in a um, publicity shot. I was actually trying to use this to intimidate someone um, who I was competing against at the uh, World Memory Championships. Um, I thought that it was photographed through a glass table, but I thought that the kind of levitation effect of the cards gave the impression that I had extra powers. But I, I wasn't actually born with uh, memory powers, so to speak. It's a, um, a set of skills that I learned. And actually, I first got into it when um, I was 18, and I wound up in um, in a hospital ward. I, I had a thing called post-viral arthritis, which is where you get a well, it's very boring, but you get, a, you get a virus and then your body thinks um, that something's going wrong and your joints swell up. Anyway, I ended up in a, in a hospital ward with lots of octogenarians who had other forms of arthritis. And um, when you're like 18, you want to be you know, motorbiking around India or having friends or being invited to a party. Um, and um, I was just stuck in this kind of endless warp of the same conversations going on again and again and again. Because it turns out that um, in your, in your mid-80s, your, your memory isn't too sharp. And so I, I had, this, had the thought, well, this is quite interesting, this memory stuff. So I got a couple of books, and I began uh, training my memory. And this is quite good fun. Whenever you're learning a new skill, of course, it's great to have um, a lot of free time. So I was there for three months. And I began training using some classical techniques, which I'm going to explain to you. I began training my memory. And, and the first benefits I found was that this was um, quite popular with the nurses to see me do basic uh, memory tricks, and so that gave me some more motivation. Um, and I wound up um, while in uh, while in learning how to do some very practical things like memorize the order of a shuffled deck of cards, or uh, as you mentioned, like a, a thousand-digit number in an hour, which um, you know I can see from your faces is exactly what you want to be polishing off your uh, your uh, your day out from the office. Um, and so this led me in time to competing in the World Memory Championships. And so this is um, me um, against my um, arch rival, Dr. Gunter Karsten. Um, now, there's a couple of things worth mentioning about Dr. Gunter Karsten. Um, the first of which is um, he's a former, former athlete, German athlete, who um, injured his knee and became a memory champion instead. Um, these earphones are completely noise cancelling. That's uh, an effect of those. And these um, these glasses are rather surprisingly they're, they're, they're light cancelling. So they're actually painted black on the inside with just two pinholes because Dr. Gundercaster was not interested in seeing any information other than the information he was memorising. And um, he he loved to memorise binary numbers. Now I thought I was quite good at binary numbers because I could remember two and a half thousand ones and noughts in sequence in a half an hour. And I was trying to intimidate him with one time. I was like, hey doctor, I'm going to take you down. You can't live with my speed in the binary numbers. You, you're a loser. Um, and so he responded to me, he goes, you're not cook. I want to say is that, um, that you are totally pathetic. The number you claim to be able to do 2,500 would not be sufficient for me before breakfast for some form up. <laughs> and uh, yeah, indeed, he did tell me that. But anyway, it was a good time. And they were kind of, they were kind of interesting moments to um, to uh, these competitions because there was a big exchange of interesting uh, techniques. And I'm going to take you through uh, some of those techniques. Um, um, and by the way, one of the things that, um, in case anyone you know is looking for a job, I, I, I now, by the way, run a. Um, um, a language learning company called Memorize, it's a mobile app which teaches people uh, languages. Um, we can do with some marketing, so um, let me know if you're interested. Good. So, um, now, Chris, do you mind, um, while you're time, I'm going to do a little memory demonstration. And so, um, we're just going to kind of um, go to a doc which can be live edited. And what I want you to do is just sort of call out a bunch of random numbers to Chris at the back there, who's going to dutifully try and type them in. So, live number demo is always a... Uh, invitation for disaster, but there we go. Um, so yeah, so if anyone wants to shout out a number, four. Oh, good. And so, yeah. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and learn these as we're going along. Having a go at doing so yourself. Keep shouting out numbers. Um, okay. So I mean, just one up at a time. Just random, just checking you out. Or well, Chris, you could just make it up. But uh, come on. Eight. Good. Eight. Good. Good. Three. Okay, keep going. Oh. <laughs> yep. Keep going. So let's get to a number of numbers which are satisfied you'd not be able to do if you were to try to do this yourselves. Okay, good. 
Okay, and now, Chris, why don't you just wiggle your fingers over there and uh, to randomly generate some more? Okay, that'll uh, well, do more or less. That's um, ungenerous of you. Uh, okay, yeah, so we can uh, put these on the screen. Now, what I'm going to do is now I'm going to try and remember these. And I want you to have a go at doing it yourselves and have a think why this might be quite a difficult thing to do. So, um, do your best. I'm going to. Um, well, certainly you can talk among yourselves, exchange some nostalgic memories. So. Just moving to the other side of the number to make it more like a tennis match. One of the things about um, one of the things about memory championships is that they are they're not the greatest spectator sport um, because uh, although, as I explained, they are quite actually entertaining on the inside of your head. On the outside, really nothing is happening. Uh, it's indistinguishable. For um, uh, anyway, I'm gonna come back to that. Okay, how are you getting around? Are you having some fun? Yeah, good. I'm going to have uh, one more quick look and then I'm going to tell you the number, hopefully. Okay, so I think, uh, I think you've got the number in. So I'm going to now um, recite the number. Isn't this fun? This is. This is probably better than a memory championship because you can't see anything but here and here. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, the number is um, yeah four one seven five seven eight nine eight three two zero three um, six one zero 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 nine one six 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 nine five three four five three four six six nine zero two three four. which allows me to do this is it also allows me to say the number backwards. So I'm going to do that. Okay, so the number backwards is, if, if, if it's of interest. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can get you out. So the number um, backwards is, um, yeah, 432096 uh, <coughs> Um, two, three, eight, nine, eight, seven, five, seven, one, four. <laughs> Isn't that fun? Right, so now I'm just going to nip back to the um, thing. Now, if you, when you look at like, numbers like that, it seems to be like a bit of a nonsense in the mind. It's sort of like, how on earth can I get purchase on this? It's all the same. It's all quite intimidating. It's all undifferentiated. And in a way, you could say this is a bit like... Um, sort of Chinese characters of a language you do not know. It doesn't sort of stick out to the mind. There's no, there's no sense of mental purchase on it. Perhaps because rather like if you were doing a um, money supermarket ad, but without skeletal, but with an unknown person. I'll try and link it into the, yep, well, I'll come back to that. Um, okay, um, but it wouldn't trigger off any memories. When you look at this, it doesn't trigger off any memories. So we can lead to some problematic situations. And so let's imagine you're in downtown Beijing or something, and you need to decide which toilet door to go through. You don't want to make a, um, a mistake. Um, and so I just want to take you through how I would approach learning these Chinese characters. And this will introduce you to a few of the core principles of memory, which we'll then explore with some um, active remembering ourselves. So, so yeah, that is the um, character for a woman. And one of the first things you need to do to remember something is connect it to something which it reminds you of. And so if we want to connect this with the character of a woman, what we do is we might imagine a kind of woman doing a sort of yogic uh, pose. Um, and then making this direct association because memory is, is founded on association. So if you can all look at that and really kind of imagine, and the more emotion you give to this, and the, the more you kind of really feel the stretch in your own imagined body, uh, the more you're likely to remember it. Um, this is the character for strength, actually. It says the character for strength. And so try and find an image in your mind which could associate this shape with strength. Um, here's, here's, here's one possibility um, it's a strong man with an enormous arm. Um, there are many other ways you could do it. You could think of it as an axe. You could think of it uh, any way you like, really. But any kind of association is a core of memory. So that's the word for strength. And this, meanwhile, is the Chinese character for, for a field. And so well, what might you think of in your mind to, to associate this with a field? 
Like, we're giving a gate, very good. Any other ideas? Oh, good. Yeah, they can down from an airplane the field. Very good, yeah. And so there's loads that you, you can do any which way you want. This is a really important thing with memory, is it's very, very individual, and your own associations are what counts. But there nonetheless are patterns. I think this looks a bit like a window, so I might think of like getting out of a window at a field outside. Okay, the window opens, there's a field. Okay, very good. Now this is the other character, which, which means uh, male, of course, it's a male and female, but um, it's a combination of strength in, and field, so you can sort of think of it like that. And to kind of um, to, to bring this together, you might try and imagine a really strong person in a field. Imagine me during my youth, for instance, on a farm with my goldfish. Um, anyway, you might imagine some kind of image of linking strength to a field. Um, good. And so um, just to kind of vaguely test whether you're paying any attention at all, what, what, what's this character mean? That's a woman, very good. How about that one? Yeah. Very good. And just as a small thing, this will become important later. Um, mumbling, while well, a good way to disguise in a social situation that you may have forgotten something, actually tends to instill in your brain the memory that... It's a bit like when you meet someone sort of who you know before, and you've actually forgotten their name, but you don't want to reveal it. So you're like, oh, who do I Or oh, okay, so well, you don't even know if you've met them before. It's like, it's so good to see you. Uh, anyway, the problem with doing that is that it kind of instills in your mind the recollection that you're a bit vague about this person. So it's always good to, to not mumble and come out with it strongly. Okay, so that's that's Bill. Uh, what does that mean? Strength. strength very good. Um, and so, yeah, so we've got strength in the field. And um, somewhere in there you will not find this character. But it'll just remind you that if you were to carry on a similar process, breaking stuff into little bits, connecting with memories you have, applying your imagination, and then actively recalling it, you can actually break down quite large sums of quite difficult information into very accessible pieces. So there are basically three principles of memory, um, all of which are shown in this example, and they are imagination, um, narrative, and, and active recall. And these play out in almost every interaction we have in the world, and we're going to explore them now with some, um, some fun exercises. So let's begin with imagination. Um, here's an example of imagination. We're imagining the character as, as a woman in her imagination. Um, there's a general rule, um, which is that anything which you would see easily in the real world, which would grab your attention, is something which would grab your attention in your memory. So it's a bit like with remembering, we're kind of looking inside ourselves. So for instance, if like um, a very ordinary looking person moves very, very slowly past you, wearing conventional clothes, that won't jump out as much as some lively, unusual example, such as, um, for some reason, no one always thinks of, a, of an elephant, but you know, an elephant mounting past, you're always going to notice it. Um, and, and this can be actually demonstrated with some very simple exercises. So, so guess what this game, you have to do it in? You've got to count the dots. Okay, let's give it a go. So, um, count them quite fast. I know in marketing, you've got exceptional uh, visual systems. Uh, on your marks, get set, go. Okay, so, so how many how many dots were there? Thirty-six. Thirty-six. Twenty-six. Twenty-four. Twenty-three. Thirty. Thirty-five. Okay, so we can set a range from like nineteen to sort of thirty-eight that I heard there. Um, let's have another go at counting some dots. This time, perhaps count a little bit faster. Uh, on your marks, get set, go. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Yeah, okay, very good. Yeah, so they're kind of twenty-five in both cases. Uh, and so, uh, but in this one they're difficult to count because they're not easily structured, they're not difficult to perceive. In this one they are easily structured and, and they jump out to you. Exactly the same thing works in your, in your imagination and in your memory. If something is structured, if it's clear, if it's easy to perceive, then it will come quickly into the memory. Um, colour is very important. If you think about how, say, um, the London Underground map would work without colour, it's, um, this is a lo-fi version of the London Underground map, by the way. But, um, but it wouldn't work uh, terribly well, but, but as soon as you have, uh, have colour, it's, it's possible to trace through different kinds of information across the diagram. The same thing works in memory. The perceptual differentiation, stuff which makes up vivid um, and different from itself, um, is, uh, is excellent for memory. So narrative is the second major feature of memory, and this is where things are going to get really interactive, because we're going to play narrative tennis to learn these 20 items in sequence with a narrative. So this side of the room is going to begin the story, and then that start of the room is going to continue the story. And we're going to go down here, and then we're going to go down here, and then we're all going to recite the, recite the list back to ourselves and feel a sense of fuzzy fulfillment before the drinks begin and oblivion can be um, introduced. Okay, good. So um, I'll begin the story. So let's begin with, okay, our bomb goes off. Uh, what happens next? Balloon. Balloon, good. Uh, <laughs> 
And actually, what's interesting is that even though that's not technically a continuation of a narrative, it's a, it's just a statement of a word. It does actually work as well. So the bomb goes off, a balloon appears. Okay, great. And then, then what happens after that? Okay, the light goes off suddenly. So the balloon appears, suddenly the light goes off. What happens next? Belle comes running in, very good. And why is Belle running? She's being chased by a boar, great. What happens next? Okay, she's been chased by a boar, but the boar gets distracted and starts eating some coal, that's great. Um, then what happens? A knight in shining armor comes along to save her from the distracted boar who's eating coal, good. And then, then what happens? He's riding an ox, great. And so, where do they, where do they go next? To the flowers, okay, cool. So, and then, what happens there? There's a neon sign on the floor, so they go to a florist, and there's like a big neon sign inside. And what else? Salt. Okay. <laughs> uh, salt is all over the floor. Great, so we've got salt all over the floor. Uh, then what happens? They use a magnet to hoover up the salt. Superb. Okay, great. So they, they, they collect the salt now. What happens after that? Uh, Alan Cook. Alan Sugar is great. Uh, I think, what's Alan Sugar doing? <laughs> yeah. he's, Alan Sugar is trying to sell a computer, but they look a little bit. But his computer is a bit of a fossil. Okay, very good. Um, and then what happens? It smells of salt. It smells of salt. So Alan Sugar comes in to sell a computer, um, which turns out to be a bit of a fossil, and it smells of sulfur. So what happens after that? They go to the pool. They go to the pool. Great. What happens to the pool? They, they read the Argos catalogue of the pool. Um, they, okay, they, they, they read the Argos catalogue, they uh, smoke pot, and then what happens? And then their teeth fall out. Okay, good. Um, Alright, so, let's, I'll take you through the story very quickly. So, there was a bomb, a bomb went off, then there was a balloon, suddenly the lights went out, and in my imagination they kind of came back on actually, so we could see Beryl flying in, chased by a boar, she trips over someone, the boar gets distracted by some coal, and then a knight comes in, uh, riding an ox, and takes her to a florist. Inside the florist, there's a neon sign pointing down the salt on the floor. They pick up the salt with a magnet, and then as soon as that's done, then Alan Sugar comes in with a computer. The computer is actually a fossil, and it smells of sulfur. They're like, none of this. So they go to the pool where they you know, read the Argos catalog and smoke some pot before sadly their, their teeth fall out. All right. So uh, let's see if we can recite these 20 items in sequence. So what I'll do, I'll conduct you um, so that you can sort of all, I'll try, I'll go at a leisurely pace so that everyone gets to act through the call. And as I say, no mumbling, it's better to make a mistake than to mumble. So um, let's give it a go. So the first thing was a... Four, and then... Three, because they stand for something which is much more difficult to remember than a, than a sequence of, of items you can imagine. Um, and that is, a clue comes from um, the presence of neon and uh, sulfur. What do you think this is behind the scenes? Yeah, so this is actually my kind of way of remembering the first 20 items in the periodic table. Um, and so, if we go through it, why, what do you think bomb was there for? So hydrogen bomb, it's direct association. Um, balloon? Helium balloon. By the way, interesting story. I uh, uh, I went in a Montgolfier, which is like the early Hot Air Balloon, um, 
in, um, I don't want to pretend they have a really exciting lifestyle, but um, I was at a memory competition. And anyway, so there was a, um, but I went last weekend into a Montgolfier, which is like a helium filled, proper old school hot air balloon. And the reason I wanted to do this was because I read the, I read this quote about how in the like, late 18th, early 19th century, uh, people thought that hot air balloons were kind of a bit like Uber. They were going like, to revolutionize urban transport uh, and all this kind of thing. I thought, oh, that's interesting. So, God, this is an irrelevant talent thing. But anyway, I went into Montgolfier. It had helium in it. It was quite fun. Uh, good. So, um, light is a bit of a weak one for lithium, uh, beryl, beryllium, boron, boron, coal, night. Nitrogen, <laughs> ox, oxygen, good. Florist, flooring, good. Uh, neon, neon, yep. Uh, uh, salt, sodium, good. Magnet, magnesium, good. Aluminium, aluminium, good. Computer, think of the valley. Silicon, very good. Um, fossil, ooh, complete ignorance of the concept of phosphorus. Um, good. Um, the kind of you, you, you get the idea. But basically, um, um, it's a remarkable and bizarre thing about human memory that it's easier to remember things via images, which are easily imaginable, that are just associated with those things, than it is by the things themselves. Which I, I think I can legitimately draw back the link to Captain's bird eye, Bird's Eye, that you borrow, or, or Skeletor, you borrow all that rich, easy imaginable emotive memory, and you introduce and connect it to something which maybe doesn't have that richness of association and conceptual richness, and, you, and by doing so, you actually borrow all its power. And this is what we do in memory techniques. Um, and the third thing which we've been practicing a bunch of things is active recall, um, where if, um, if you kind of just go over something, read it again, the effect on your memory is massively less than if you actually actively record it, if you actually take the trouble to actively recall. Um, and so this is kind of connected with a phenomenon called spaced repetition, which perhaps you've heard about already today, which is basically this idea that the first time you um, see something, it decays extremely fast in the memory. So for instance, do you still remember what my pet goldfish was called? Albert. Albert, excellent. And because you just got reminded of the fact that it's called Albert now, it, you probably actually remember tomorrow we like the other dude, uh, probably the only thing you remember actually. I'll bump into a coffee shop tomorrow. It's like, you have a, you have a uh, Albert. Um, but anyway, you, memories decay extremely fast. So even within about 10 or 20 seconds, some of the quality of a memory is already decaying. And so in the ideal world, when you're looking at something, um, you'd sort of see it again after 10 seconds. It'd be a little bit of repetition then. And then after a minute, and it kind of gets exponential. Then after roughly 10 minutes, then after an hour, a day, a week, a month, a year. And so if any of you are um, in um, digital retargeting, just as a guideline, when I, um, you know, whatever, go to a fridge website and look at a fridge, you don't have to show me every single time I ever visit another website. You can show me in a spaced repetition schedule uh, and leave bigger gaps between the repetitions, which will also save you budget. Um, and, um, um, and it, it's just more effective for memory because you, when, when and, and there's, a further, there's a further really interesting effect here, which is that if you remind someone before the point at which they're about to forget, you're kind of wasting their brain power and it's, you feel it as boring. The ideal time to be reminded of something is just at the point that you would be otherwise about to forget it. So trying to space stuff out is totally very, very important. Um, and so just to, to wrap things up, um, we've done, I'll just go back to the kind of the three things. Imagination, narrative, and active recall, they intersect, they're kind of the same, they're different elements of the same thing. By employing these techniques in memory and perhaps in marketing, you basically make use of the natural strengths of the mind, the natural physiology of the mind, which is primarily a perceptual organ. We are overwhelmingly perceivers, so anything which is interesting and rich and entertaining to perceive will stick well in the memory. We're narrative creatures, we like to connect stuff together through narrative, and we, we we remember what, what is important, which is basically the stuff which repeats. Because if something is does not repeat, then it's probably not important. I was um, I, <laughs> I was thinking about this. It's actually a really interesting philosophical concept of this. I was thinking about this earlier today when um, one of my, my team, I remember, came to me and then she was really excited about something, but in the middle of the sentence she realized that what she was saying wasn't exciting. She was like, hey, I found the most amazing thing. And then, uh, no, don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> and I was thinking about how the, how the fact that like, 
If you remembered every single random thing, I mean, I did actually remember that because it was funny, but if you remembered every single random thing which happened to you, everything which didn't repeat, your mind would be full of nonsense. There's an actual fundamental design feature of the human brain, is we remember what repeats. Because if it doesn't repeat, it's probably a bit random. Um, anyway. Um, you get the picture. Um, so yeah, so, uh, so we're going to do a little bit of repetition just to finish up. Um, so what does that mean? Woman, Woman yep. Um, and um, no mummy. So what does that mean? Woman. Very good. What does that mean? Strike. Very good. What does that mean? Yeah. Very good. And what is the element after boron? Now the boron's in, so it's going to come. What comes first, beryllium or phosphorus? Beryllium. beryllium. If anything, think about these memories is that you kind of you can get them in sequence. What comes immediately after nitrogen? Oxygen. Good, because the night was riding an ox. Um, and then, um, what comes after the Argos catalog in our story? Phos. And what does Argos catalog stand for? And what does pop stand for? And what was the last thing in the story? And what does teeth mean in this thing? Calcium. Calcium. Okay, very good. And by actively recalling these, you'll actually probably remember this nonsense tomorrow, which may or may not be beneficial for your life, so I hope it's, <laughs> hope it's not too bad. Um, great, so there they are, the principles of memory. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Um, oh, and then which, which would you go through? Just checking? Yeah, 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 very good. Very good. 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 Um, and, and yeah, and to summarize the situation, um, we still sound like fraudulently vapid advice, but um, yeah, to, to remember things, you just got to make them memorable. <laughs> <laughs>